Hey YouTube and happy Thursday. I know it's been a long time since my last video, but I've been pretty busy over the past few months between taxes and the job search. I'm excited to share with you all that I got a job as a federal contractor at the NIH and I'll be starting that position in a few weeks in mid-May. But anyway, I'm recording this video to tell you about a new computer I've gone and on which I've installed Linux, the Panasonic Toughbook CFU1 Rugged Tablet, as its name suggests. It's a tough book. This thing can survive anything. I got this for, I think it was 50 bucks from a wholesaler surplus uh, store, sur sur surplus seller on eBay. It came with um, two batteries, but not a power cord, so I got that. And I got this because I wanted to install Linux on it, Anti-X, like I installed on the uh, Samsung Q1 Ultra. And I wanted a device I could get dirty to look up how-tos for car repair, bicycle repair, home maintenance, and things like that. I thought this just would be the perfect device. This really was what UMPCs, ultra mobile PCs, were supposed to be. This is really the pinnacle of the UMPC era, probably, oh wow, 10, between 10 and 15 years back. I had shown you, you know, my Linux installation and, you know, a little overview of the Samsung Q1 Ultra uh, UMPC, which is quite cool, but the this Panasonic just really blows it out of the water in terms of its performance, in terms of its specifications, and even Linux compatibility. I mean, it was just incredible that basically everything, even the camera on this thing, uh, worked out of the box. So just to give a little more background on it, um, as you know, I described for my home use, the, the Toughbook CFU1 tablet was intended for warehouses. You can guess pretty quickly by the barcode reader up there. It was intended as a terminal to use in industrial applications and warehouses for doing inventory and stuff like that. And indeed, this one still has a ID code here on the front, some kind of um, you know specific serial number. And if you look on the side, you can see that this was property of the city of Tulsa. Let me zoom in there. And the uh, uh, wholesaler I got this from this happens to have a ton of these that the city of Tulsa, uh, the city of Tulsa, auctioned off. Okay, so before I turn this on and uh, talk to you a bit about it, I'll just give you some of the specifications, how, how um, souped up this was amongst the PCs. It, these have a dual-core Intel Atom processor as opposed to a Celeron or, you know, an, uh, I'm trying to think, there's some AMD processor specific for PCs and thin clients I'm forgetting. But anyway, it has a dual-core Intel Atom Z530 processor. Uh, at 1.6 gigahertz, this is the more advanced version. The older one had a 1.33 gigahertz Z520. It came with either one or two gigs of DDR2 RAM. Uh, this one has it had two gigs built in. I didn't have to um, upgrade it. It originally included a 64 gig solid state drive, but I did a mod that I'll talk about in future videos to install 128 gig. Oh, uh, what's the term for this? Oh, wow, I can't believe I'm forgetting. A um, MSATA, that's it. Uh, MSATA uh, SATA, um, SATA drive inside. It you, it originally had a uh, ZIF hard drive. Let me see if I can just get this in, in focus here. Yeah, I think I got that in focus. Yeah, originally had a uh, ZIF, which is a uh, PADA-based hard drive built in, but thanks to this ZIF... Uh, Zif to MSATA adapter, I can use a really nice uh, 120 gig um, drive, which is more than enough for my intended, intended application on this CFU-1. The LCD is 5.6 uh, inches, it's TFT, WSVGA, 1024 by 600, which is quite good. As we'll see in a second, it's you know really nice LCD and easy to read. It is a touch screen. I did some work configuring that as I did for the Samsung, and I'll have to share the X input calibration calibration script or configuration file that I've, I um, uh, manually determined. It has a mono speaker. It plays WAV and uh, MIDI uh, MIDI files. 
It has Intel HD audio support, TPM security chip, a backlit, that's super cool, I'll show this to you in a little bit, backlit 61 key keyboard. It has additional keys that you can program here for you know zooming in, going up and down, and then custom apps. It has LEDs including that uh, including battery indicators. This is two hot swappable batteries, giving it something like eight hours of battery life. It has these other status LEDs you can see on the side. It has microphone and headphone jacks, one USB port, which is sort of a uh, disadvantage as opposed to you know other machines that would have more USB ports. But you know I I ended up say connecting a USB hub when I needed an external keyboard for installing AntiX Linux. It has DC input, you can see here. Uh, it has um, very rugged uh, waterproof covers for all the ports. You can see those um, along the top. What do I mean by that? You know, these come unclipped and then to seal them back in, they aren't just covered, but there's you know a little cl clip in there to, to prevent water and dirt and um, cat hair, my cat's over here, and, you know, other other intrusion of unwanted foreign material. It weighs about two and a half pounds. It's not that bad. Uh, mine comes with a barcode reader. These also include a GPS, a camera that I'll show you on the back. Uh, my cat decided to do other things. The camera has a dual LED light, and it has a fingerprint reader for um, security. Let me disconnect this. Uh, well, I won't disconnect it yet from the power supply. I just want to show you this too. Uh, indicator LEDs on the back and an uh, additional feature here. This one came with a hand strap, which is super, super convenient for carrying this around. I'm really looking forward to using it for um, outdoor how-tos and stuff. You know, if I need to do a quick Google search for how to check chain line or, you know, um, wheel truing. That, that would be something fun if I uh, build a truing stand or got an electronic one and plugged this into it. That would be super, super cool. Uh, let me disconnect this. Uh, you can see the um, uh, like uh, secondary power switch here on the side right next to the DC outlet there. That's for charging. Uh, I'll close that in the um, like water intrusion resistant way. On the back, you can see that um, just above above the um, uh, strap, you can see the camera with two LEDs. I guess you could use that to read QR codes if you were using this in a warehouse or in something similar. Uh, the USB port is um, up here. I don't know if I showed that before probably did. Uh, then on the side, a few other things I don't think I mentioned. Um, well, there's like the headphones and, and headphones and microphone jack. Um, let me rotate this a bit close. Uh, there is also an SD card port here. Or an SD card reader, excuse me. As, so you can take you know your pictures from a camera like the one I'm using to record this video and 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 and, and stick that in there. Let's see if you can read that. Uh, yeah, it's probably not focusing on that too well, but you should see SDHC. It has a stylus that fits right in here. I'll rotate this around again. And I'll show you the touchscreen. Okay, so uh, these normally would come with Windows 7, but I, as you know, I'm a Linux person. I like open source operating systems. I like the versatility of Linux, and um, I'm, you know, having a little love affair here with 32-bit Linux. So without further ado, let's turn this computer on, get some real action in the video, and um, see Anti-X Linux. I have to hold that. There we go. I had to hold that for a few seconds. It's amazing how much of this thing worked out of the box. Yeah, you'll see the Panasonic logo show up. Uh, everything, even like the the power, uh, like battery level checking, worked right out of the box in Anti X Linux. And normally I had to do the other stuff there. There's just Grub showing up. Uh, while we're at it, I'll show the backlit keyboard. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? You can use this for your 
late night browsing in the dark. That is so cool. Oh, it's gone 47 days without being checked. Oh, let's turn that off. Okay. Just doing a little hard disk scan here. Yeah, there you go. It's amazing how fast uh, Anti-X runs. It's uh, a lot faster than the than the Samsung, but that Samsung Q1 Ultra I talked about in my previous series of videos has, I think, a 600 or 800 megahertz um, cell run. Okay, so let me hide this from you real quick. Uh, it's a 600 or 800 megahertz Celeron, and um, that, you know, just is not going to have the power of a um, 1.6 gigahertz dual core atom. Okay, we're logging into the ICE. Ice window manager session. Uh, you can also use Fluxbox um, out of the box here. Let's see. You can. I've got. There's Wi-Fi on this. That's the other thing. There's Wi-Fi and I think Bluetooth as well. I forgot to mention that in the specifications. I think this is uh, goes up to N Wi-Fi, so it's quite quite fast. Uh, you can see that there's a you know 120 gig hard drive, two gigs of RAM. I'll go ahead and um, show you the touchscreen a little bit here. It, the touchscreen is it was kind of a pain in the ass to set up. Um, I had to use this this uh, portable keyboard I have for um, diagnostics and, and and stuff. Portable keyboard with a, a touchpad uh, just to install Anti X. But after that, I mean the keyboard works out of the box. The touchscreen works out of the box and just needs calibration. Uh, let's open up. See, I think I had seen the terminal somewhere here. Maybe I have to open that up again out of uh, just the, the um, main menu. Okay. And so you can see the RAM that's free. Yeah, the font might be sort of small for, for you all. Um, let's see. Let's run screen fetch here. Screen fetch. Installing Anti-X wasn't hard at all. This is the newest version of, of Anti-X. There we go. We can see 7% uh, disk use. For 421 megs. So that's, that's, um, that's Anti-X uh, just base RAM use, which is quite low. It has Firefox ESR, which runs okay, but I also have, have um, Sea Monkey and Pale Moon, which are even lighter weight than that and links and so on. Uh, let's see, what's something fun I could show you here, uh, besides that I can show um, each top, each top running. But again, if you're considering getting a, um, uh, a CFU one for um, Linux, I'd highly recommend it. It's you know amazing how much stuff works, works out of the box with this. Um, I might try GUVC view to show you how that the camera you know, it doesn't need any special configuration, unlike the the U1, um, uh, sorry, the Q1, Q1 Ultra, U1, Q1. Uh, it works on the U1, uh, takes some configuration on the um, Samsung Q1. That's HTOP, you know, you can see there's two two cores there. Um, my cat really cares about, don't get in the video mangle, let me, um, there we go. Good girl. Okay. You know what would be fun if I can get my cat um, in GV UVC. My cat's going in the closet, so I probably won't get her. But um, oh, that was exciting. And uh, I should see in uh, GVC view. Oh, it was working before. Um, let me just uh, tilt this up here. Oh yeah, yeah, it is working. That is a blurry view of my yucky closet.
Okay. Anyhow, so I'll go ahead and close that. I'm thinking if there's anything else um, I should show you. Maybe I'll just show you a tiny bit of web browsing with um, and and just some of the other apps that I have here. Okay, I'll quit that. Um, I go to here and then to um, applications and then internet. I should see. Uh, let's try. Let's try Sea Monkey here. And do something like text.npr.org. Anyway, very nice little machine. I could, you could imagine all sorts of different things you could do with this. I mean, it's portable and it's a lot more powerful than a Raspberry Pi, as much as I love uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, yeah, let's cancel that. Sea Monkey. File, new browser tab, and then we could do it as something that'll load up fast text.npr.org. Wow, that was quick. Mass arrest. Yeah, like, um, yeah stuff that, that's um, in the news recently. Oh, this is funny. Yeah, the Supreme Court appears skeptical of blanket immunity for a former president. Gee, I wonder who they're talking about. But anyway, to, I'll, I'll get out of that uh, discussion. Um, and into, let's see what, what other stuff we could do here. Let's see if Frog Find works. Google. The keyboard's not as bad as you'd think for, for something this small. Very easy to use. Um, TLS handshake. Okay, let's do um, no. Stay, stay signed out. This is nice. This is a lot faster than even the lightweight Firefox ESR that comes with it. Um, yeah, I'm so far impressed. Frog find. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not. Of course, I understand the risks. Says intent add exception. Uh, yep. Frog find the search engine for vintage computers. And then the last thing I'll do is see if I can get uh, my radio show up here. Maybe I'll even play an episode. Uh, Copa, or no, no. Copacabana. Uh, no, Copacetic Music Hour. More AJ. A little plug for my radio show. And with that, I think I'll probably wrap up the video. Um, I really like this device. It's it's 50 bucks well spent. I have another one that I got, uh, so I that I thought I'd take biking. You know, I'd stick in my uh, bike bag since again, it's a rugged device, long battery life, great for things like that. And before I install AntiX Linux on that, I'll show you what I had to take apart inside. There's uh, a 3G modem that has to be removed inside, and kind of. Uh, you know, a fun, fun um, uh, disassembly process. That's not sarcastic. It's it's legitimately fun. And I'll record that as I did for the Samsung Q1 in a future video. Again, I'm sorry it's been so long since my last video. I've just gotten really busy with stuff. Okay. And then this might not work, but I hope it works. That reads the port. 